Growth Decline Analysis, Part 1. A literacy test. Not yours, but the charts, so legibility perhaps. We want to introduce some basic concepts and where we're not going to bother analysing, we'd like you to have some understanding why. Note to censors. We use only government data. If you have a problem with the results, speak with to the government. I've prepared a grown-up version of our autofit charts, literally a bigger size, so better graphics, but it also has a couple of nifty features which won't matter for the moment. I have in mind a number of analyses, some quite punchy, like nailing the Ferguson lies and the UK reporting fraud, but the overwhelming message I'd like to convey is normal, so to speak. We've been here before, but I really want to get to grips with certain key countries and to nail the cult addiction to exponential, lockdown and flattening the curve. First though, in a sense supporting that, I think it's important to see just how normal the world is once you're free of the Western agenda. To that end, I've yet again scanned all 214 countries that we track. The World Health Organization might be up to 216, but I'd have to go get population stats, etc. And frankly, at this point, do we really need to go there? 214 is fine. I've broken down the charts into four categories of high interest, good, OK and sparse, where sparse is excellent, as we'll see. Let me briefly introduce you to the charts and then we'll look at the categories and what they tell us. Here's Bangladesh semi full screen so we can still chat. We'll be using this mode in a minute. As I've noted, these are part of our normal update bottom left, but a bit more detailed. It does mean, however, that for an introduction I can refer you to our video, Chart and Stats Essentials, if our brief introduction isn't enough. Briefly, on the left is cases, daily reported data, and on the right, deaths, ditto. In our videos, blue is usually a key colour for cases, red for deaths. The scales for cases and deaths on the right-hand side are linear, as we're going to be looking at a limited vertical number, the peak, and we want to see the natural view of the normal curve. We auto-fit a normal distribution to the reported data, the smooth-humped curve, and the growth decline line for that auto-fit is shown. Auto-fit normals, growth rates and growth decline are described in our Chart and Stats Essentials video, I hope. Certainly we've covered them elsewhere, but short form, from the date of the peak and the size of the peak, you can double the figure from peak to suggest a total, and from those elements you can auto-fit a normal distribution. If it looks good, then the data is indeed normal. A normal distribution has an interesting quirk. All humped curves have declining growth rates from day one, versus exponential where the growth rate is fixed or constant. That distinction is going to be critical and is one of the main things we want to drive home in these videos. If cases or deaths are humped, it isn't going to overwhelm society, and that was evident even before Ferguson published on March 16th. The straight declining pale blue and pink lines are the growth rate decline lines for cases and deaths. The solid orange and purple are the actual decline lines or growth rates. A humped curve will always have a decline line, growth rates declining from day one. Real data will have whatever it has. If it declines, then it ain't exponential, and we've been lied to, and it's the most fundamental lie of all, along with lockdown and flattening the curve. Now this is a bit mind-bending. If the orange matches the blue, both declining, ditto pink and purple, then we're talking normal, not exponential. If the auto-fit normal is a good match for the actual data, then we're talking normal, not exponential. They're the same message, just a different perspective. Simple translation, London to Leicester is 100 miles. You'll understand why that's on my mind, lockdown, but it's also my beloved's home city. If you reach it in one hour, you're doing 100 miles an hour. If your speedo says you're doing 100 miles an hour, you're doing 100 miles an hour. Same thing. Yes, I know that's a fantasy given traffic, etc., but you get the point. Same conclusion, 100 miles an hour, from different perspectives or inputs. Here you can look at the data fitting the autofit normal, or you can look at the actual growth rates matching the decline line derived from the autofit. It's the same thing. The point is, when you see that, you're looking at normal and all 214 countries, you're going to be looking at normal or nothing, which is why I mentioned sparse. It's kind of difficult to do much analysis with this sucker. 
But if that's their entire experience of COVID, why do we want to analyse? They're free, so sparse is excellent news. Another non-crisis country to contrast with our own. And sparse includes charts like this. To get a gap in that orange line, you need missing data for a week. So if nothing's happening for a week, well, I guess it's not much of an issue then. So again, if we haven't got the lines we need for analysis, that's great news. Nothing to see here, folks. I want you to understand these distinctions precisely because I'm not going to go through 214 charts one by one. That would be painful for both of us. The tour video is there if you're curious and want to make sure I'm not cheating you and selecting only those favourable to my agenda. Now the last thing I want to highlight here is that cloud of dots. Those are actual day-to-day -day growth rates, i.e. today's cases over yesterday's case. Inevitably, they're pretty wild, especially for the sporadic, not quite sparse charts. However, they serve two important purposes. Firstly, those are the absolutely most raw growth rates, today over yesterday, so they'll keep us honest. They reassure us that it isn't just that our average or solid line happens to be that way. If the dots back up the solid line in terms of direction, that's great. And that's somewhat the second point. Bangladesh is a nice example. It's not a completed curve, but has a sub-outbreak in deaths, and has some missing data, so it's not a perfect chart. But that cloud in cases is wonderful. Notice how it falls over time, descending to the green, unity or flat, line. In other words, wild as the day-to-day -day rates are, nevertheless they fell unmistakably as the contagion developed. The hallmark of a humped or normal distribution, it ain't exponential. It ain't going to overwhelm the nation. Another nail in the coffin of the exponential lie and governmental fraud. Yes, I know, it's only because of lockdown. 214 countries either with so little experience of the virus that it isn't worth mentioning, or normal, no matter what policy they followed, and not one exponential nor for Ebola, flu, official COVID, infographics, not anywhere. In fact, the exponential virus is so mythical, it's astonishing that it was so successful and tragic that it seems not one scientist feels like standing up and saying, Epidemi epidemiologists are lying lazy scum who don't deserve to be called scientists. It isn't exponential. So that's what we're going to be looking at, a selection of such charts, but a first pass just to illustrate some interesting cases and get you warmed up as to the kinds of things we're going to be looking at. Here's another example of an excellent chart, Germany. Viewers of our chart updates will know that we consider Germany to be a textbook European chart, very tidy, with a proper 14-day separation between cases peak and death peak. You're not supposed to die the day you enter hospital, are you? We're not going to be doing cases death lag or the other measures. This won't be a chart update series. It's about really looking deeply at what these gov charts reveal about government behaviour and Ferguson's fraud. And I reiterate, overwhelmingly it's about being able to sit back and watch the tour videos, no narration, and see that there's a whole world out there, none of it exponential. Here's an example of a good chart that we won't be spending time on. Clean charts, well-defined, actual growth decline lines, orange and pink, a nice descending channel in cases, Pretty straightforward, and lots of those if you scan the tour video. Here's an example of an OK chart. It's got the completed orange growth decline line with choppy in deaths, a wild cloud of rates, dots in cases. We could put some effort into analysing it, but really there's a whole bunch of a lot easier charts that we can use to illustrate the principles that are important. And again, here's an example of sparse, so named for pretty obvious reasons. Hello, anybody there? What? Nobody died? Huh. So, we've got 28 charts I've set aside as interesting that we'll go through briefly here. 68 are good, kind of similar to the selection we're going to go through, but it would be somewhat redundant at this point. 74 are okay, it would be hard work painstakingly analysing them to illustrate the principles we can see more el easily elsewhere. And 42 are sparse, like this fella here, New Caledonia, where they've basically escaped the virus and there's nothing to see. So let's get to it. Bangladesh, interesting for its cloud, falling to the unity, peak or over, yesterday's cases equals today's cases or deaths. 
Given the excellent fit of the data to the AutoFit normal, it's no surprise to see the orange line also an excellent fit in the zone where the normal is. This is what we're particularly interested in, the zone, highlighted in yellow. Cases or deaths have started to rise, so we're into the contagion proper. Then we're looking for that mythical exponential, dailies climbing to heaven, with constant growth rate in cases, or that pretty universal normal, data fits the auto fit well, actual growth rates orange and purple, match the auto fit decline line pale blue and pink. Here we've got a classic descending normal orange line. which drops onto the theoretical and stays there. Belarus. I like this chart because it's spiky, has a lot of missing data, yet you've still got the descending cloud, reasonable fits the auto fit, and orange and purple falling onto and tracking the auto fit theoretical growth rate decline line. So sporadic data doesn't have to mean nothing useful we can do to analyse it. For the curious, we cope with this by inventing tracks, which, which versus wheels cover more territory to cope with holes and gaps, etc. In our terms, we sum next week's cases and last week's cases, divide next over last, and call that today's rate. And instead of daily, with gaps, we're using a form of weekly data. Of course, if nothing happened last week or next week, then you've still got a gap, whence we end up with the OK and sparse categories. Great news for the countries, just nothing to analyse, or they're gappy. China, which is really Hubei, see our chart updates and chart and SATS essentials, is a great chart for its principal contagion, over before Ferguson even published and giving the lie to Ferguson, but somehow the world is blind. It's worthy of proper attention in due course, later videos will go more in depth for key countries. But take a look at the descending cloud of cases or, or deaths over the original contagion and the similarly descending orange and purple lines over that contagion. Never exponential. Colombia I liked again for its descending cloud in cases and deaths. Even though it's still on the rise, that isn't the reason that our autofit is poor. What's interesting is the series of outbreaks most easily seen in the deaths chart. Whether we take the time to illustrate that in detail, we'll have to see. Cuba. I love that a communist rogue nation can report such excellent data that the data matches the auto fit very well, and the orange and purple match the pale blue and pink theoreticals pretty much perfectly. Not just China then, and Russia will also see. They all lied, no doubt. Denmark, again of interest for its multi outbreaking cases, hence the wavy orange line, but again a descending cloud in cases and, and a descending orange trend until, and we're going to be very interested in the time of that breakaway, when the orange goes sideways while the pale blue descends. It's inevitable that in the real world, while the theoretical has dropped to a minuscule number close to zero and 0.1 people generally have a hard time getting sick, mainly because it's hard to find 0.1 people, the real world continues to have a lingering, sporadic cases. If it's down from a thousand a day to ten a day, whether cases or deaths, then really that's hardly a concern. If it lingers at peak, however, close to a thousand a day, just picking a figure out of thin air, not down at the floor ten, that's something else. This, in fact, the UK, which went sideways at peak, so yes, understandably, we're going to be having a very close look at the UK in due course. Look at how the cases and deaths bulge out to the side, with the orange and purple going sideways. That's fraud, pure and simple. France descending dramatically right from the very beginning, and totally in line with our after-the-fact autofit. What's going to be interesting is when we reverse the process and use the descending real data to create the projected data, but that's for another day. Which is probably a nice place to stop. 
We wanted to introduce you to the charts we're going to be using for a series of videos and to familiarise you with what you're doing, going to be seeing and why it's going to be of interest. Again, mostly it's repetition in a sense, but we've scanned the entire world and they're all there in the tour. So it's not just the standard 50, the whole world is normal and both the Exponential and a bunch of governments and Ferguson are fraudulent. More and on, I'm Andrew Mather, a 60-year-old Brit, mathematician, financier, technologist, husband, biker, pilot, healer, whatever. Feel free to get in touch, andrew at peerlessreads.com or andrewamather.com. Either should get